So today's research paper and code deep dive is on contextual document embeddings put out by Cornell University. And up front, this is going to be all about rag tuning and a specific rag tuning method that has been invented recently by Cornell University. And so we'll deep dive into this uh, and go over, first of all, the research paper, and then we'll go over and do hands-on deep dive into the code and take a look at uh, what's going on there. So first of all, diving into the research paper itself, I want to note that to me, up front, very specifically, uh, this is, and what we're seeing within these research papers is, I'm gonna call it um, the uh, rise of, uh, we'll call it um, models that uh, can cluster models. And then, so essentially within AI, there's only two types of AI models, right? We have uh, AI clustering and then uh, predictions. So, um, classifications and predictions, and then that's it, right? There's only those two categories. Uh, and all AI models do one of these two things. And then so LM models are prediction models. They predict the next token in a sequence, et cetera, right? And so prediction models are uh, kind of, they always get the, the attention, right? And then, uh, but so what we're seeing in, in this paper very specifically delves into and is reliant on classification or clustering algorithms. Uh, so like the opposite, like the B version. And then we're seeing, I bring that up because I'm seeing more and more research papers very recently that are making breakthroughs with regards towards clustering algorithms and classification algorithms. Uh, and then when you look at a lot of the um, uh, like the references within this paper, they're all like 2021, 2024, 2023, 2023, uh, and you know, I'll go up, you know, 2021, um, 2021, 2022, 2023, just highlighting like essentially that this paper and uh, like their algorithms, that especially the algorithms that they're using are very recent algorithms. There's been a lot of recent developments and more and more recent developments that have kind of come to a head with regards to, towards clustering algorithms. Right? So a uh, uh, reason why, I guess, like for a lot of people is that computationally, we are getting to very good points with regards towards parallel processing and computers. Uh, and this has been a uh, since about like 2006 or so uh, trend, right, where we started, just started getting into into like a parallel computing and then for home computers. And now it's just it, where it's very efficient, very good. We're there, parallel computing, we can do it all day. And then so within that, we're starting to see uh, kind of uh, refinements around the computational aspects of these things, right? It's um, out of necessity, when necessity breeds uh, improvements. And then so uh, here we are, and then this is their improvement. And so let's dive into the method. Their method is very straightforward as to um, what it does, right? And then so I'll talk about it in code basis. And so it's very straightforward to me. It's better, to, best to look at it from this graph. And so remember that uh, when we're talking about like embeddings, um, word vectors, et cetera, uh, Anything related to AI, it's all, we're dealing with graph theory. And I say this a lot in a lot of videos, it all boils down to graph theory. And you see it all throughout here. Here's a matrix. Uh, and then it's plottings of graphs, right? It's really what is going on within this. And then so it's the same thing with the model weights and words and concepts, etc. It's graphing these concepts uh, on a chart. And then so in this instance, and then why I bring this up is what the model does is, uh, let's say that you want to rag tune on a document. Instead of just rag tuning on a document, what this does, what this contextual document and embeddings does is you rag tune on a multitude of documents. Uh, and then within that, it provides the model context as to which mo which documents are similar to each other and which documents are not similar to each other. And then within that, 
uh, it creates the uh, contextual document embeddings. And then so this contextual embedding is uh, the improvement that they make, right? And then so it's, again, like, oh, once you boil these things down and then you understand exactly what happens, like the final reveal as to like what exactly is going on in this paper is kind of like, woo, right? Because it, it's this. It's um, So uh, rag tuning always has this, always has your first stage context and your initial document embedding. And then what they do is they add a third plot on the chart of final contextual embedding. And then they, uh, so they do do something cool within this. So they use k-means clustering algorithms. So like it's all back to clustering algorithms, right? And then so they use clustering algorithms to essentially find the center of this. And then like the center of this is what they utilize uh, and then feed to the model for the like the uh, like the end context right and then so going through uh essentially uh what we can see here uh as far as the the actual code it's very straightforward right so we have our in this instance we're simulating the first instance we're simulating the document entirely uh and then we're simulating its neighbors uh and then we generate embeddings for the neighbors and then for the document itself and then we aggregate all of this contextualize it all, find the center of it, apply dim uh, reduced dimensionality so we can plot it, and then give out our example. Uh, and then that's our simple example, right? And then so how this differs from traditional rag tuning from a coding sense is, again, very straightforward from both a coding sense and a practical sense. Uh, traditional rag tuning, all it's doing is just giving it a bunch of uh, documents and to, to retrieve, and then that's it. <laughs> and then so you give it documents, it embeds the documents. And then the important thing I, I, I think it's important to highlight within this is that when we're talking about embeddings uh, within rag tuning, we're not talking about emb model embeddings, right? We're talking about prompt embeddings. And then so it's a completely different thing. We're not fully updating at any point the embeddings of the actual model. And then that's kind of my knock on rag tuning overall. Um, but I'll just mention that and leave that there. But so uh, going in, uh, we uh, essentially we go through and then we uh, perform and we set up our rag tuning function and then our retrieval function. And then in this instance, we've given it documents and then we give it a query. So tell me about a famous structure in Paris. Uh, and then we've given it a query and then like two of these are related to or one of these is <laughs> related to a structure in Paris uh, and then the rest aren't, right? Uh, and then our its response is tell me about a structure in Paris. The Eiffel Tower is located in Paris. Uh, the Great Wall of China is visible from space. So like this is the GPT-2 model. And so I want to highlight this overall, right? So um, this is a very simple model that we're uh, feeding this to, GPT-2. And then like, um, so within this, we're giving this and then we're querying GPT-2 on this. Tell me about a famous structure in Paris. And then it, it's not smart enough to just grab this one, right? It is smart enough to just grab these two. It doesn't grab all three are all four. It's just these two, but it is relating China and Paris. And that's just the, the, um, the, uh, limits of GPT-2, right? And then it goes on about uh, Paris. The tower was built in 1883. A picture of the tower was taken by Charles de Mont. Uh, the architectural plan of the tower in French shows the structure. I used to see the view from the sketch to the French skyline at the time. Today, here are a couple of images. Here's an image gallery of photographs. I've also published some of, and it's, it's pulling, you know, from whatever GPT-2's database at this point, plus our ragtune data. And that's what ragtuning does, right? And then so here's a simple example of ragtuning. Uh, and then, so here's an example of both methods, right? So this traditional ragtuning plus this new method that we're talking about. And then so we can see uh, both output examples and then we'll see what happens, right? And then so uh, this is the example from the uh, from ragtuning uh, and simple ragtuning. And then this is the example from our, like the, our response from our like the um, the contextual writing.
Um, and then so this first one, we can see it's the same thing, right? To tell me about a famous structure in Paris, and then the Eiffel Tower is located in Paris, so it's the Great Wall. The Great Wall is visible from space. Uh, White Nile is visible from space, and then the White City falls to the sea. You know what you're getting at, right? It's the same way it was for the Romans. There's the same story. It's even a little bit easier to explain why the U.S. does something like this. Uh, and then a bunch of gibberish, right? Because this is a GPT-2 model. And then so uh, generated response for the reg tuning. Tell me about a famous structure in Paris. The Great Wall of China is visible from space. Python is a versatile programming language. Python creates an abstract base structure uh, such that it can be used for large data sets. Because the base structure does not have all the attributes that are common for Python, people build base structures that are called bases and may not exist in every model. Python is not prof uh, perfect because the base structure is not what we can find to be parallel in a given model. Uh, and then, so interesting note here, right? To me, it's like that's the gibberish at the end. But it, it's pulling its gibberish from this, right? So this, like, we can see that even in, like, a smaller model, and then even when it's spouting gibberish, it's impacting the outputs in general to go with this as opposed to this. And then it's, these are the types of things that we only get from real world testing and that only show up in this, right? And then so, uh, like, I'm always a fan of, uh, and especially when it comes to AI models, and especially when it comes to things like this, uh, real world testing and showing actual examples as opposed to like a benchmark test, right? Looking at like the benchmark testing and what they offer specifically like within their benchmarks of this paper. Uh, so like here to me, like these, like, this versus this, right? So uh, they're contextual versus random, 63.81 compared to 65. That doesn't tell me a lot, right? <laughs> this tells me a lot more than 63.81 compared to 65. Uh, and then so just highlighting this overall, like why I prefer uh, these types of exercises and looking at this overall, um, when we're looking at this types of uh, things such as contextual document embedding. So I'll leave a link to both the research paper as well as the this collab notebook here so you can check through uh, and then go through it uh, both ways. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.